It's time to turn up the fog Let me take you on a ride We aim it straight to the sky Spread your wings and fly It's time to turn up the fog Let me take you on a ride We aim it straight to the sky Spread your wings and fly Time to turn it up right now. Time to turn it up. Time to turn it up right now. Time to turn it up. Time to turn it up right now. Time to turn it up. Time to turn it up. such a good day uh Granite Noir today I just really really enjoyed it like it was busy though so the first event started at 10 and then the last one that we attended today finished at like well it finished at like five but then obviously there was signings so it was closer to kind of half five before we got away so it's been a really long day and I'm glad to be home but I just had the most wonderful time with B and with Shannon. Um, I think the only letdown was the event called Witch Hunt that was um, hosted in I think it was a church I'm not really sure it, it didn't look like what I recognise as a church but then I wouldn't recognise something that isn't the kind of thing that I grew up looking at. Um, yeah, I think a, a little bit of it was the fact that it wasn't quite what I expected. I expected it to be a little bit more like a witch trial, a little bit more interactive. And then part of it was the fact that for some reason the staff uh that particular event was so incredibly rude like unnecessarily rude and then also like the really really uncomfortable seats but like they can't avoid the uncomfortable seats and it was a good venue for what it was and the performers themselves were brilliant i just thought the the way that the piece was crafted it took away some of the impact as it had this like big finish and then it had another scene afterwards which was a little bit of a shame but yeah just such such a good day and like meeting all these authors and getting it here about their writing their influences kind of everything it's been just so so fun and I'm I might have um broken my book buying ban but also part of it part of the book buying ban is to kind of encourage me to only pick up books that I'm super super excited about and literally like all of these books I'm so excited about plus you know they're all signed and dedicated which is pretty awesome I think the plan for tomorrow is that we've got one event like we did get tickets for two but there's no gap between them and they're at different venues so we're just going to focus on the one event we've got which i think is called pandemic tales and it's i think it's three authors that wrote like stories um not necessarily set during the current pandemic but like around a pandemic so that should be interesting and it I'm looking forward to a much more like low-key day but I'm definitely going to be doing Granite Noir more because this was just a really really enjoyable experience. Day two of me going to Granite Noir. I've only got one event today but I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a talk by some authors that have written books 
surrounding pandemic so it could be quite interesting So that's day two of Grand Noir. I mean, technically it was day four, but I didn't manage to make anything on the first two days. Definitely want to try and make the whole festival next year because I had such a good time this weekend. As I said, I just had the, the one thing today, which was Pandemic Tales, which had Catherine Ryan Howard, um, Ewan Morrison and Leslie Kelly and they were talking about their books that kind of surrounded various different pandemics. It was really interesting to listen to them speak and they're all very different books. So Catherine Ryan Howard's is set around lockdown one of the COVID pandemic. Ewan Morrison's is set roughly like five years in the future and has kind of a conspiracy theorist, um, survivalist, end of times kind of father, but the protagonist is his 15-year-old daughter. And then Leslie Kelly's is set in Edinburgh and is roughly based around something similar to the 1918 influenza pandemic and it's based in Edinburgh. So it was really interesting to kind of hear about their different books and also their different takes on pandemics and especially to hear from Leslie and Ewan as they both started their books prior to the pandemic so they were kind of basing it on emergency preparedness and sort of like common knowledge things about pandemics but they hadn't lived through a pandemic on this scale and I think it's going to be especially interesting in the case of Leslie Kelly as her books form an ongoing series so if I understand correctly, her first four books were all written prior to the current pandemic. So it'll be book five onwards that'll be informed by what we've all been living through, which I think is going to be really interesting. So kind of my, my takeaways were that like Catherine Ryan Howard sort of wrote the book because the way that the lockdown hit Ireland was in some ways a lot stricter than like I would know in Scotland because people had to stay within two kilometres of where they lived so it was very insular she was living in a studio flat at the time um, and she could see Ireland in this very like unique way that you don't normally see Dublin and she kind of wanted to create almost like this time capsule but also she had an idea for she's one of those authors that has the start and the end and just needs the middle so she had those and then the pandemic was gave her that catalyst of oh this is the middle of the book and then Ewan Morrison's sounds really interesting because the protagonist is the 15 year old daughter of this kind of end of days 
survivalist who has a book bag and believes that there's a pandemic going on. It's not incredibly clear whether that actually is a pandemic in this book. And you're getting the two sides. You're getting the survivalist father who like 100% believes that there's a pandemic, there's conspiracy theories. And you're getting this mother that's worried because this daughter has been kidnapped by her father. So I thought that sounded really interesting. I did feel a little bit nervous because I wasn't sure how, like, how well the author came across. But then again, like, I feel like anxiety can do strange things to you. And it was clear that he'd seen a lot of research around, like, apocalypses and end of days and that kind of thing. And one thing, and it is like 100% not a critique of the author and 100% a critique of the editor, and I really like wish I'd remembered to tell the author, was that apparently he wrote out, he drew out a map, like imagining the way that the layout of the rooms and everything in, and the location looked, and he was going to include it in the book. And the editor made him scrap it. And that makes me so mad because the editor's justification was that like the reader would see it in the book. And I'm like, excuse me, I have aphantasia. I cannot see what this looks like. I cannot visualize it. Having a having this map laying it out is really would have been really helpful. Um oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then the, the final author, Leslie Kelly, absolutely hilarious. You could 100% tell that she was a stand-up comedian and her book sounds absolutely hilarious. So Shannon and I decided as a result of that session that we were going to get Leslie Kelly and Ewan Morrison's books, um, Kevin Ryan Howard, we definitely would have got her book, but she wasn't appearing in person, so we wouldn't have been able to get them signed and dedicated. So what we've done, um, I've probably already included some B-roll footage, but we've gotten um, both the books and we've got them dedicated to both of us. And the plan is to sign and not sad the, and the plan is to annotate them like so both annotate both books and then like keep them on our respective shelves so I'll be keeping the Leslie Kelly books and she'll be keeping you and Morrison's so that should be a really fun experience as well um and before I go through like a quick haul of all the books I bought this weekend, even though I'm meant to be on a book buying ban. Oops. I will just quickly go over the other events that, in, that I attended. I think yesterday evening I did briefly talk about the events that I'd attended, but just in case. So the first session I went to was Magic in the Air. And on that panel we had AJ West, Rosie Andrews, and Helen Sedgwick and I thought all of those authors were really interesting to listen to it was interesting to hear how they brought kind of a supernatural element into their books and I'm definitely interested to read Leviathan by Rosie Andrews which I already own a copy of as it was the Goldsboro premier book of January I believe and then the Spirit Engineer has been a book that I've seen quite a bit on Bookstagram. And honestly, like AJ West was the author that drew me to that panel. I also really enjoyed hearing about the author's different writing processes and hearing about a little bit about what they've got next, because I think it's always really interesting to hear authors getting excited about their next works. I certainly love hearing about whenever Shannon's writing and, you know, hyping her up. So I kind of feel the same hearing about 
authors writing about their next books. The next panel that I intended was Bold New Voices, which was meant to have Hannah King, Farida Abike Iyamedi, and Graham Armstrong. And I found like I found it interesting, but I was a little bit disappointed because it was the first panel I attended where there was an author video chatting in. Now, don't get me wrong, I completely respect authors and like basically anyone's choice to not want to attend in-person events. And that isn't really my issue. It's more that the way that these books were sold, there wasn't any mention that authors would be uh, Skyping in or Zooming. I think they actually use Zoom, but there wasn't any mention that that was going to be the case. So it was a little bit disappointing, especially as part of the draw of these events is getting to meet the authors and a little bit of like the added bonus is that it's somewhat an exclusive perk to be able to get your book signed. And whilst I already own a copy of Ace of Spades and I believe it is signed, although I actually don't know because Illumicrate doesn't always sign their books, but you know, I would have been absolutely devastated because I, I'd i already heard, I'd heard of Graham Armstrong and I was very interested to hear from him. Hannah King I hadn't heard of, but absolutely I'm obsessed with the sound of her book and very much looking forward to reading it after hearing her speak. But Graham Armstrong just wasn't there. Like, I don't know if it was on the fault of the host or what had gone on, but there was no explanation. It was just like, Graham Armstrong's not here, which I don't think reflects well because it implies like a no-show, whereas like, I don't need to know people's business, but even saying Graham Armstrong's unable to make it today for personal reasons, that that would have been enough for me. And as I say, Farida Abike Iamedi was um, zooming in, Skyping in, whatever. So we had two palettes, but I felt like we didn't get the same level of engagement. But that also could have been the host, as I felt like they did a lot of the speaking and that time could have been gone given over to the authors to actually like speak but it does make me very excited to read Hannah King's book and Farida Iamedi Abike's book and then the next thing that I intended was Witch Hunt which I'm almost certain I did speak about yesterday and was really let down with it terrible staff painful like uncomfortable experience not really what I expected from the programme and it makes me hesitant to attend that kind of thing next year like I'll probably stick to more panels especially as I think one of the panels that we would have liked to have gone to yesterday would have coincided with Witch Hunt and I ended up picking Witch Hunt and for that, I'm really mad at myself because I would have liked to have attended that panel. And then I ended yesterday with Closer Than Close, which had Oya Ken Braithwaite, L.V. Matthews and Lexi Elliott. And that was by far the standout of the weekend. Like that was definitely my favourite panel that I attended. It's really amusing because for whatever reason, I decided not to pick up tickets for that when I originally bought my tickets. It was a panel I was interested in, but I think maybe I didn't want to cram too much into the day. Maybe I didn't know if I was going to have enough time after Witch Hunt. I can't remember what my reasons for not getting tickets were. But then I spoke to some staff who told me how long Witch Hunt was going to be. And whilst I was having lunch with B and... Shannon I actually bought tickets for that so I literally bought the tickets 
at lunchtime yesterday for that. And it ended up being my favourite panel of the weekend. And then obviously we had the one panel today. So in terms of preference, I, as I say, cl Closer Than Close was my favourite. And then it would go Magic in the Air. And then today's panel, Pandemic Tales. And then Bold New Voices. And then like far, far at the bottom was Witch Hunt. And I guess now it's time for the bit where I show you how many books I got. I think next year I'm definitely going to go with the like knowledge that I'm probably going to get all the books I already don't own. But at least I know that because I, I went there this weekend expecting to buy some of the books. Like I definitely wanted to try and pick up AJ West's book because that's one that I've been really excited to pick up and he's done this thing where he's like had a stamp that like if you get them at an in-person event you get a stamp in your book which I thought was really cool um but yeah I didn't expect I didn't quite expect to be so wowed by all of the authors and all of the events that I picked up so many books like <laughs> this is my pile from this weekend but I'm also rationalising with myself the fact that it's okay because, well, for one, I've already read one of them, but I didn't physically own a copy. And two, these are books that I, if I was able to immediately pick them all up and like read them all immediately, I would. So we'll start off, I, I can't remember what order these go in. But we have four Leslie Kelly books. We have The Health of Strangers, Death at the Plague Museum, Songs by Dead Girls, and Murder at the Music Factory. I'm not going to be going into detail about these books. I will list them all in the description. But I've got a book haul coming up, I think next week, where I will go into detail about these books so, so you can either check the description and just search for yourself or like I say subscribe and I'll have a book haul coming next week where I'll talk a bit more about them. Uh, then we've got The Spirit Engineer by AJ West, My Sister the Serial Killer by Oya Ken Braithwaite. This is the one book that I've already read I very much enjoyed it when I read it so I'm very happy to now own a copy and not only do I own a copy it's signed and dedicated. The Twins by L.V. Matthews, She and I by Hannah King which is Shannon and I's buddy read in I want to say April. I literally have the list right in front of me I could just tell you. Yes, it's Shannon and I's April Buddy Read and we are so desperate to pick this up but we figure April's soon enough and if we happen to squeeze it into this month like April's close enough that we can get away with that and then the final book that I picked up was How to Kill Your Best Friend by Lexi Elliott <laughs> and I love it like it's got Peppered throughout the book is got different methods, which I think is absolutely brilliant. I also feel like these two books pair really well because this one is about a pair of best friends. And it's like, it's so easy to say, I would die for you, but would you kill for them? And then this one's literally how to kill your best friend. I hope that you enjoyed this video about Granite Noir. I apologise that I haven't been able to put much content from the actual panels in, but I had a really great weekend. I'd love to know what, what writing festivals you have near you. I can't say that I'll be doing this very often in terms of going to book events as money, but 
I do plan on going to Granite Noir next year and I'm already super excited and thinking in my head about like how I'm going to plan it and everything. So until next time, bye! So all of your characters are essentially morally grey and their beliefs are so unique. How hard was it for you to separate your own beliefs from your characters' beliefs? Did everyone hear that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can, I can go with that. Um, that's, it's a difficult question because I am a similarly, sim, in a similar way that, that my character is, I doubt things, I don't know. Um, what Helen is saying I think is entirely right. You know, we, we live in a time of uncertainty. So that is reflected in what my character thinks. And then I, what I find quite difficult, I suppose, is to write in the way that maybe AJ has done very successfully. <clears throat> I find it quite hard to imbue a vicious character with, with sympathy. I find that tricky. So when I'm writing, I think my character probably does reflect my values in a way that maybe not all novels it is not the case in all novels. Um, and I think that I love reading a really good anti-hero, but I kind of like writing a more classic, straightforward, honest person. Um, and therefore, I think he probably does reflect my values more than, maybe even more than I like. I might sometimes like to um, take the risk and go for the more anti-hero type character. AJ, do you find it difficult to separate your own beliefs from your characters? Uh, I'm naturally a sociopathic bastard. Hopefully, <laughs> 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 easy for me. <laughs> no, I, I tend to think I tend to think that the difference between bad people and good people is not impulses. We all have broadly very similar impulses, apart from at the absolute extremes. Um, we just don't like to admit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, for me, writing William was really about exploring some of those impulses that I have around jealousy and fear and rage, suspicion, uh, anger. Um, you know, all of those things that we have inside ourselves, I like to think the difference is that I, I control those things and I reason with those things and I push the good things forward in front of them. Um, and William's story is kind of a guy who starts to crumble and lose his control over those impulses. And as I said, I mean, without turning this into a therapy session, after, <laughs> after you know, leaving the BBC, going on, going on Big Brother, which was a real mind... Um, you know, I did find that some of those principles were crumbling and I was losing my grip on who I was and who I thought I was as a moral person. And so, so following William's character through that process was, was actually quite cathartic for me. It was almost like writing my own warning. This is what you could become if you're not careful. Um, so I, so I, 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 that's, that's how I did it. Um, and and I, think, I think maybe sometimes with some of the stronger, more visceral responses that I see in a couple of reviews, someone wrote, one wrote they had to throw their Kindle at a wall, they were so angry at me. And I thought, yes, I've done it. Because what I've done is, I, you know, when we read books and characters like that, it's really you're reflecting the reader back to themselves, I think, very often. The mm. books should challenge people, they should provoke a response, they should have a, so. you know, and, and, and in some ways it should be controversial and... and you know, step into an area that you're not always comfortable with. Now, Helen, it was slightly different for you because you had so many mm -hmm. different viewpoints, but again, could you separate your, your own moral compass from the your, your characters? Because some were better than others. So. Um, that's true, okay. and I think I do... I think I try to get right inside my characters. So I'm not thinking about who I am and what I believe. I, I have... I, I try and get into their heads to the point where I'm thinking, well, this is this now is what I actually believe. I believe what this character believes, and how they got there, and what am I going to do from this point if I actually have that belief set in my head? So I almost try and become them when I'm writing them, which is my way of writing them in a way that is not judgmental, because plenty of them do things that I disagree with, but I don't want to be there as if I am the power that gets to say, well, you're wrong and you're wrong. You know, I want to be someone, as a, as a writer, I want to be someone who says, well, this is a human being. And they might be, for the reader, they might be utterly wrong, but I need to write them as an authentic human being who has existed and who has got to this place somehow. So it's kind of like what you're saying, I, what, would have hap what needed to happen to me in order to get into that character's mindset? Um, that's how I try and do it, I think. And we are totally agree, we are all capable of good and evil, I think. It's what pushes us there.
there's a place 